Welcome everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the four main mistakes that make 97% of NAM workflow fail in production. And by fixing those four mistakes, you're going to be well equipped to build production ready workflows. Let's get right into it. All right, so the four main mistakes that most people make that's basically gonna render their NNN workflows useless in production is the fact that a lot of people are code variables, and so that's a big no-go. They have no security around their workflows, mainly webhooks. And also they have no way of error handling, so they don't have any retries which uh, when we have a bug with an API, but that's just temporary, uh, basically makes sure that the whole workflow stops working and they don't log their errors. And so it's very hard to go back into it and actually find um, precisely what's the error, especially when you start doing a lot of volume. So we're gonna be talking about those four mistakes and how to fix them. And we're gonna start with basically hard coding variables. All right, so let's talk about a real life example of hard coding variables before going into the in and end workflows. So here we have a tangible, real-life uh, sign for speed synchronization. Uh, the problem with it is that we're stuck with it unless we change the whole sign. And so the speed limit in this zone is never going to change unless we physically change all the signs in there, which is quite costly probably. But in Estonia here, we also have digital signs like this that lets us adjust the traffic, uh, adjust the speed limit based on the traffic flow and the weather. And so in the summer, maybe you can go 120 in a certain zone, but in the winter, you only want to go at 80 or 70 like this. So this is super cool because you don't have to change the physical sign. It's basically just a line of code that could be plugged with the uh, weather app API and then uh, it adjusts the speed limit on this. Okay, so this is a real life example. But let's go into a tangible scenario that you're going to encounter into your NNN workflows, for example. So if we have two team members, me and Rob, and I used to be the old copywriter, right? And based on certain workflows, I want to be assigned the task of being the copywriter for that task. If I hard code this variable, and I'm going to show you here uh, an example of this, if I open this here, I basically hard coded my uh, Airtable variable, right? Gonna show you the Airtable database as well, so you know how this looks. But basically, it's just names and IDs. And when we're gonna create task, we want to associate a name, so we use the ID for this to that task. Here, I decided to record it, so it's not a variable that's gonna switch every time we update who's the new copywriter. So this is a problem, right? And a lot of people do this in their workflows. Um, so if I plug this, and then I'm gonna explain to you the different flow. What I have in the main workflow is basically, let's pretend this comes from uh, Airtable. This is a webhook that I'm going to send to the secondary workflow. And let's say that the new copywriter is uh, this ID, which is, is uh, it's basically Rob now, okay? But let's pretend this is a tree that comes from Airtable. So this is the ID of Rob, and he's a copywriter. Here, I basically just create a random task. I use AI just to do something very quickly. And here the parameters is set to the old one, so me, because it's hard coded. So I'm gonna show you what it's gonna do. And then it's gonna create the record inside our table right here. So we're gonna use the AI output and then we're gonna use the set variable output. So if I execute this here and then I send a webhook from here, we're gonna see that this execute and then this goes into our table and create the actual task under the name Rene. This is not what we wanted because as we can see here, we're sending the ID, if I go back into the table, we're sending the ID of Rob. So because we are coded this variable right here of basically that's my ID of, well, that's the ID of Rene, um, this is a problem. So you can see that if in many workflows, you'd be doing a lot of hard coding variables, it'd take a long time to go switch one by one. The general practice that we want to do is to never hard code things, but also just set up variables that are going to be dynamic. Okay. So if I just remove this, and then we go back here. Basically, the AI is the same, but then the parameter is coming from the webhook. So the information that we're receiving technically from our table, right? So this is a dynamic field right now. What I'm going to do is, again, execute the workflow. And then I'm going to click execute here. And as you can see, it goes in, it creates the record. And now we're having basically a new task that's now assigned to the right copywriter, right? So it's super important that uh, you do this. You never hardcore variables, you dynamically code them. Okay, this is also good practice if you're a dev. Um, so yeah. The second thing that we're gonna be talking about here is like I said, the fact that people don't have an insecurity. Okay, so you might have noticed here, I'm running the different webhooks 
I uh, could go back here. I'm running the web books, but there's no authentication. And so this one here doesn't have any authentication as well. This is a problem because if someone gets a hold of your key uh, or your web book, uh, then he or she can basically just uh, use your web book and um, exploit it, okay? And this is a bigger problem when you start playing with nodes that use AI, because if someone wants to automate an attack on you, then this is gonna use all your credit and your money, okay? So the way that you avoid this is to have security around your uh, web book. So what we're gonna do here is create a basic header authentication, and I'm gonna create a new one for you. And we're just gonna basically create test test. So I'm gonna put test test in both, just to show you and save this. And now if I try to execute this workflow and I go back here because I did not put any authentication on this, this should not work, right? You see this shows an error right now. If I click on it, it says there's no credential. It's, it's not authorized, right? So the way that I would fix this problem inside the HTTP request that I'm doing is basically to have the same um, authentication. Uh, the best way to do this would be also to have uh, credentials like this. So I would do uh, header auth, then I would create a new header. Oh, let me create a new one. And then we said it's test test, so we're gonna use this. So it's, it's set up. And now if I go back here, it's still waiting. I'm gonna start again and this is gonna pass right now, okay? So this is a very quick way to protect your uh, web books and therefore has security onto your workflows. Uh, if you do production workflows, you need to do this. Otherwise, uh, you, it could spell big trouble for you. Uh, there's other ways to do protection. You can have basic auth, uh, GWT auth. And also if you go the option here, you can have IPs whitelist. So this is super advanced, but uh, if you need to be very hardcore with security, I would suggest that you use IP whitelist as well, okay? I actually don't really use it often, except if I'm working with a big business um, and they always operate from the same IP, okay? And if it's a requirement. The third thing that we're gonna talk about right now is the fact that people don't do any retries, okay? So if you've been working with AI or any APIs in general, uh, you're gonna notice that uh, sometimes OpenAI is not available or Cloud is not available, right? And uh, that is an issue because it might work 10 seconds later, but if you don't retry the workflow, then the entire um, run that you were trying to do is not uh, gonna work, okay? So, and it's gonna stop there and you're gonna need to figure it out later. So the way that you avoid this is basically you go into the settings here inside your node and you click on retry on fail. What I would advise you to do, especially if you're working with AI, is to put from five to 15 seconds in between every uh, retry. So I'm gonna put five here, okay? Um, so I'm not gonna show you, but basically if this uh, fails because OpenAI uh, open is not available, uh, this is gonna try again five seconds later. And so if that was just like a common error that happens and, and then and nothing else, then the next time it retries in five seconds, the workflow is gonna go as usual and it's gonna work. Super important that you do this because you don't wanna be going into your workflows again for no reason if it was just a classic um, server not available error, right? And the last thing that we're gonna take, uh, talk about is basically uh, logging. So super important, whenever you have an error, you should be logging those errors because if you don't, it's gonna be super complex at scale when you have a lot of workflows and volume to go back into your scenarios and try to pinpoint the error, okay? So the way that you do this, um, basically after every node like this, you can go into setting and you can say on error here, continue using error output. And we're gonna be using this node here, stop and error. So if you go in the plus here and you had error, you have a stop and error and you have an error trigger. Okay, so I'm gonna show you both. If you do this here, it lets you have a message. So error in the AI node, but maybe you wanna have something that's more um, appropriate to the workflow that you're building, okay? For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say error in the AI node. So it's super clear that the error comes from there. Um, and so whenever this finish, if there's an error, that's the message I'm gonna message I'm gonna receive. Okay. The second thing that you need to be doing is logging those errors. So I'm gonna be using our table for this, for example. So I can show you the table here. If I go into testing logs, uh, here I have the variables, workflow name, the error, the last node, and the URL of the scenario. So super important to go back into it faster. Here, 
I have an error trigger node. So this is an entire different workflows that you'd be creating. This is not something that you're going to put into your main workflow here. And the way that you're going to plug both together is that you give a name to this workflow. So here, this is error workflow, right? And then in your main workflow, you go into three dots up there and you click settings. And then here, error workflow, you could select the actual error workflow that you want to plug for this one. So you can have many here. For me, it's error workflow. Then I click save. And so this is going to work. Okay. This is only going to send notification if your workflow here is active and not inactive. So this is not going to work if you're doing some tests. So let's put this one active. And inside this trigger workflow here, what I want to do is basically, this could be Google Sheet, but for me, this is our table, is to log the different information of the error. So here I have the error name, the workflow name, the last node used, and the URL, okay, of the uh, scenario that we were using, because you can plug many scenario on this error trigger. You could also send a notification inside Slack if you wanted to receive real-time notification whenever there's an error, okay? So here, uh, let's basically, let me just pose, uh, change this to production URL uh, for this to work. Boom. Okay, so this is live. This is going to work. Now let's send a workflow. This is going to create an error right now. So if we go into the execution, we're going to see that this is going to error out in a couple of seconds. All right, so as you can see, this created an error as expected because the variables inside this doesn't exist. So this was just a mistake that I made on purpose. And then it's uh, it went to the error lane, stop in the error. And if we go back here, we're going to see there's an execution here. And then if we go into Airtable, we're going to see uh, workflow name, receive webhook to AI. So this workflow is indeed receive webhook to AI. The error is error on the AI node. So this is what I put as the message here. You can be more descriptive. Uh, if you're expecting some kind of errors and uh, the URL here, if I was to click on this would bring me exactly to this workflow. So I could be able to debug this directly inside. Okay. When you work at scale with a lot of volume, you need to be doing logging like this, because if you don't and you have a hundred error to catch up and it all links back to one mistake that you made in the workflow, this is going to take a lot of time for you to figure out. So super important that you do this. And most of the nodes that are prone to errors, you should uh, basically put a stop in the error node and, and make some custom message. Okay. If you found this video informative and you like it, please like, subscribe and comment down below. I read every comment and I reply to everyone. If you want to learn more about AI automations and also operations, I also have a free school group that we just created and the link is going to be down in the description below. Looking forward to see you there.